Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we delve into the bourbon journey of Gokin. My name is Miss Becca Sue. Please join me welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, as well as our special guests, Clayton, Gokin, and Shot. Hey, gang. What's up? Howdy. Hello. 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 So, yes, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to focus the show on Gokin. It's part of our America's Got Podcast Talent series. We're not putting these all back to back. I told a couple of people about this. They said you should put them all back to back to back. I'm like, eh, no, you're just going to have to find them as they come out. Uh, you know, it's it's like the old uh, TV shows where you'd have to watch an episode and then wait a week and then watch the next one. So it's going to be the same type of thing here. This is old school style. So yeah, so very, very fun. And uh, or if maybe you're one of those people that has to have it all together, then you're just going to have to wait this whole thing out until the series is done. That's four shows and uh, and then listen to them all together. So we'll be doing a a let's see here. What is their last show? It's a it's a um, it's a mailing in for show number twenty nine ninety nine. So you have to wait till at least show number twenty nine ninety nine to complete this. So it should be fun. And uh, the idea is one show about each of the people here, and then one where it really gets into the creativity because we know that uh, our mailing in shows are we have no no nothing to talk about. Uh, if we start all. it up and no one's saying anything, it's going to be a very short show. So we'll see how it goes. Exactly. That's going to be that. It's going to be it's going to be kind of a, a slow jog throughout all of this. Uh, you can of course pull out in front during that part of it, but then at the end it's a sprint. It's a sprint to the finish, and we'll see who wins this thing and becomes a regular. Uh, you know uh, in guest host on the bourbon daily should be fun Gokin, before we get to the show about you you said you've also got small talk here as you begin to make a move you're you're right now you guys are all bunched up and you're you're trying to make a move to to pull apart from these guys what do you got here for small talk i've got something that uh, i mean part of it is a little uh, old man anger but okay. well, i have pulled up stuff from the show that's good yeah <laughs> I have a, a real pet peeve of mine driving, and that's people that don't use cruise control. Do you Ooh. use cruise control? <laughs> yes. I don't need to because I'm usually passing everyone. Whoa. I agree. Ah. Yep. So you're the guy that passes me and then slows down in front yeah, of my 30,000-pound yeah. rig and what? makes me get out and pass you again. Mm. No, you won't, you won't see my taillights. Okay. Keep going. Interesting. He just keeps going. He just Interesting. Keeps going. It's, yeah, so so fast. It, it's the it's the worst for me. Uh, like I said, I, I have a, a about a twenty five thirty thousand pound um, truck and trailer. We go camping all the time, and so you're rolling down the highway, and I've got my cruise set, and somebody will come up along, fly up alongside of me, and then they'll barely pass me and pull in front of me, and then they'll start slowing down, and then I go out to pass them, and I get about halfway around them. And then they floor it and take off again. And I can tell the wife, I'm like, we're going to pass this guy like five times in the next hour. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, they That's speed up. Yeah, they come around you. They slow down. It's like, do you, have you not heard of cruise control? And usually when they slow down, they've gotten a call or they're on their phone. 
And then as soon as they hang up, they're boom, oh, they're well, back in the fast lane. Back, going. They're back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm the guy that flies by you and then 20 minutes later gets off to get something to eat. And then you pass me again. <laughs> I go by you again and I'll yell out the window, you've been lapped. Oh. oh. He's also the guy that you'll see the next exit pulled over by the highway patrol. And, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Whoa! Laughing the now. first, uh, the first shot across the bow. This is a, this is a, that was a move there. That was all right. Smart. That was just, that's good. That's good. The guy was late. Yeah, I, I like, I like that. This, so, uh, that's yes, a fair point. I, 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 what you're talking about is very frustrating, Jim. Uh, I agree, or just we call you Gokin on the show. Uh, I, I agree that uh, yes, and uh, I saw a great quote about this uh, one time from uh, Kristen Wall, the regular at the ABB Barrel Shop. She said, uh, she posted out there, I'm going to need you to uh, utilize the same intensity you had cutting me off to pull in front of me uh, uh, now that you're driving ahead of me, uh, you know, keep, keep going. And, you know, cause people, people do that. They, 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 they fucking cut you off to get in front of you and then they f- slow down for some reason. What, what yeah. do they think is going to happen there? Or they get off on an exit about a hundred feet after they got past me. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe I can't maybe we're where... in the left, the, the center lane and the left lane on a three lane and they'll cut across three lanes of traffic right in front of me just as they're coming around. Right. Right. My favorite hell? are those uh, those assholes who literally there's nowhere to go around in traffic. Like it's like there's there's the traffic is already going slow, like and there, there's no real getting ahead, right? But right. for whatever fucking reason, they're swerving between everyone as though they're gonna somehow win some sort of magical race that doesn't exist. Right. And it's like all you're gonna do is in a squish between those two fucking semis that you decided to swerve between again to get over back and forth that's not getting you anywhere faster what the fuck are you doing and that goes those are exact same people the cruise control bullshit it's exact same fucking people and they're the worst Mm -hmm. and it yeah it fucking it just pisses you off and you're just sitting there you're going what the fuck are these people doing just you're you're not getting any faster i mean it's the same as all of a sudden you're going what what is this what is this traffic for and there's nothing happening no. right why is yeah, there really... nothing happening and there's traffic it's because of those fucking assholes who speed up slow down speed up slow down and it's they create circle. a traffic snake which is just where all of a sudden everyone's got to hit their brakes a little bit and then steve's hitting his brakes then i have to hit my brakes and then jim hits his brakes shot hits his brakes clayton hits his brakes and it just creates this whole snake back and then steve can speed up then i can speed up and it just keeps going back and then it just pisses you off because what what the fuck is happening? And then all of a sudden it gets like slowed down all the way to nothing. No one's even going. Right. It, what the it, fuck? That is same happening? guy is also the guy who I was on a uh, about a three hundred and twenty five mile motorcycle ride yesterday. Eight a.m. I left and I got home at eight o'clock last night. And on my way home, I'm on the interstate and I'm running about eighty or eighty five. And there's a guy in the left lane. And there's like. Uh, I'm in the right lane, and there's probably five cars that come around me in the left lane, get in front of me in the right lane, pass the guy in in the left lane, and and keep going. And it goes on for like 10 miles before this guy ever finally gets it and pulls over. Mm. I don't understand how you don't understand as a driver when people People are passing you on the right that that's – that you're what a do you problem. Think? What do you and maybe think, you should get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Maybe. Right. Clayton, what do you think, man? Yeah, it really grinds my gears when, uh, like, so, you know, I'll be going a pretty good speed above Verde Belts. You know, like 55, I'm going 85 miles an hour, right around 80. And then someone will come up, fly behind me. And I'm like, okay, like, just give me a second. I'll get over. And once I do, then they get in front of me and then slow down. Right. That happens yeah. routinely on 55. And I'm just like, I. Why don't you just get over to the left? Yeah, I think you just saw my vehicle and say, you know what? Uh, there's something about this guy that just, he deserves this. Right. And it drives me insane. Yeah. They uh, they take one look at your Prius and they're like, ah, fuck it. I'm going to cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't going 85 in no Prius. <laughs> this is true. The thing would be shaking like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I took the back seats out, so, you know, less weight. <laughs> <laughs> On that note. All you are, you wouldn't touch the pedals. It's time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Clayton. Clayton hasn't done a cork pop yet. Yeah. So I've got uh, Buzzard's Roost uh, Distillery Select. Okay. Straight bourbon whiskey. So let's see what we got here. No, nothing there. Quiet. Absolutely nothing. Quiet. 
I... Quiet. All right, uh, Goken, you're next. All right, I have uh, my second pick uh, in my Almost journey. Along your bourbon journey. Okay. Yeah, uh, where's the damn camera at? There it is. This is the Yellowstone ABV, All the right. challenge pick. Okay. I'm going to try something here. I'm going to keep talking just a little bit while I look on. No. It was out uh, that's, that, that's the lead. Were that's you on mute? Lead. Were you on mute? Yeah. No. That's, yeah, that's I don't get it. How about that? So, Is that any better? Second time? No. 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 Third time. Third time, no. not even uh, audible at all. All right, shot. you're next. Let's see what you got. I've got... Fucking trash. All right. Jack Daniels ABV pick. All right, that's a good one. Oh. That's our lead, boy. It was uh, it was uh, uh, sloppy. It was, uh, it was sl sloppy. very sloshy going on there. So, uh, yeah. But that's our lead right now, Becca. What do you have? Um, I have got some Dark Arts Whiskey House here. Uh, this is finished with toasted juleps. I have no idea what these are. French oak staves. Some sort of French oak staves. We'll see. Okay. Oh, that was solid. We got a winner. That was good. Little sloshy uh, there, but uh, we'll see. I, I don't, Colonel Taylor. I think you guys uh, are never, cheating with your microphones. Colonel Taylor never uh, has good cork pops, but let's see. I'm still going to play the game. Not well, though. Not well. Becca wins. Uh, she's two for two. In two, this, for two. Uh, series. two for two. Two for two. Cheers, gang. Cheers. Can you yeah. see that? Look at that. I'm even Neely I'm family using lucky. a Neely glass. He's working. He's Neely working. The, he's Why just he working it. It's just, uh, you know, if we got ledgers here, and there's just another point for Jim right there. You and I should just uh, tap out right now. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm Rocket Hill Moonshine University. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's nice. Solid. That's all. That's all. I don't know what mine is. Where'd you buy that? <laughs> Mine's wild turkey. Wild turkey. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. All right. What we'll do next, we'll take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking to Gokin about his bourbon journey. We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of executive bourbon steward certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your executive bourbon steward certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your executive bourbon steward certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller and one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years, from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. And now, back to the show. I am Stephanie McNew. You are listening to the Bourbon Daily. The real name of the palette is an ampersand. 
Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking to Gokin about his bourbon journey. Yes, we are. So Gokin, uh, same thing. We'll kick off all these with kind of the same first question, then whatever questions happen from the group happen. But, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the bourbon journey. How'd this thing get started? I think I got started um, actually at a, at a wine shop. Um, the, the guy had... Uh, we used to go there for a, a wine tasting every Friday night, and, and he, he happened to have a single barrel of uh, Four Roses that he had bought. And they had scotch um, quite often, and one of the guys that we met there was a big scotch drinker, and I, I could drink it, but I was just not a big fan. Um, and I tried this bourbon, and I thought, now that's something I can drink. Um, and I wasn't real big into it for a year or so, and then uh, the wife said, uh, hey, we got to lose weight and uh, I'm putting you on keto, and you can't have beer anymore, but you can have bourbon. Whoa. So <laughs> I started, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's good for you. You know, it's all okay. grains. Sure. You know, Vitamin B. Fruits and nuts. Sure. So um, I started going to uh, Total Wine and uh, met Jim, and Jim would have these bottles at the end of the uh, the the aisle at at, uh, at Total Wine, and we would we would sip some of those, and and it was you know always single barrel stuff, and and then we talked about uh, maybe going to the the trail, and, and he you know told us where to go and what to do, um, and, and you know who to go see, and then uh, at about the same time he started telling me about uh, Neely's and and about you um, Steve and and the ABV network, and and you started coming in to total wine there in Brentwood and holding classes. Yes. And so I would come to, uh, I came to the Jack Dan or the Jim Bean class and I, and I came to a peerless class. Um, and it was just like, well, this is, you know, really cool and interesting. I love the history. Um, and so I just, you know, started buying bottles there and I did a little bit of chasing for a while, but you know, never could see anything. So, um, I, and I quickly learned, um, you know, thanks to, to you and Jim that, you know, the, the craft world, um, is way better than, than the heritage world. Um, and, and I started going after the single barrels and, and it was, uh, it's become a habit, a hobby, uh, an addiction, an issue, a retirement, uh, delayer, right. uh, right. what have you. So in my personal bourbon journey, uh, at least the part that t takes me to a, a public, uh, you know, the, the ABV network stuff, uh, Gokin was early on. He's the person uh, in this group, actually, that I know the longest, even longer than Becca, uh, because he's back in, uh, you know, doing those uh, the back in the days of doing the classes uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. And, and one time, Becca, I guess, get this, him and his wife brought me a gift one time and it was a uh, an Old Crow bottle opener. Yeah, well, this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Old, Whoa. Vintage Old Crow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm marking that's that down fun. in the notebook right now. That's good. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's I mean, two points. I bought yeah. I brought you playing cards. He did. He did. They're political, of course. Yeah, political playing cards. <laughs> Steve looks real impressed. Casino cards with the corner cut off. No, <laughs> yes. no, no. Much better than that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes. So, anybody else have questions for Gokin about his bourbon journey? Yeah. Jim, seeing as like you used to, you know, drink beer before, probably in a lot more volume, have you ventured into any of our, like, you know, beer barrel finishes or anything like that, that kind of crosses both worlds? Yeah, that's kind of where um, it, it started. Um, actually, I was never, a, I, I was, you know, a very light beer drinker, very domestic light beer drinker. Um, I didn't like IPAs. I didn't like craft beer. Um, but I found uh, there was an, another establishment that had a beer school every once a month um and and they would have you know a distributor in with with several beers and you could try all these beers and i actually really gravitated towards the dark beer um the stouts and the porters and then um they would stick around for a bottle share afterwards and there would be people there that would have these bourbon barrel aged um bombers or even like 750s of stuff that's you know 15 16 percent and it's thick like molasses uh you know and and really good bourbon barrel aged stuff yeah. um i think probably uh 
Duncan's bringing well, Coors Light to that bottle share, drinking yeah. that shit. Then <laughs> no. drinking the good stuff, and then we would buy want something those? that day. So if we'd go and go, and I'd go and ask the beer girl. I'd be like, hey, "Pork chop. What? What do I need to bring tonight? Pork what's chop. What's here that's good?" <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet this pork chop now. This yeah. Is like, oh, yeah. What a What a great name. Yeah. Yeah. Pork chop. Okay. I'm happy that's not my nickname. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> know that. <laughs> Uh, what else you guys want to know about Gokins? I want to I want to know what he takes on his camping trips, and if he'd run across the asshole that cut in front of him and slowed down, and they ended up at the same campsite, what would he share? I wouldn't share a damn thing with that guy. <laughs> okay. That's the right Fair. answer. I man. usually um, I, I I always take uh, anywhere from five to nine bottles um, for a weekend. I figure, you know, three a night. Um, and I usually try to have some sort of a theme. Uh, I provide the bourbon for the, the group. Um, there's usually, there's two other couples um, that, that go with us a lot. Um, and, and neither one of them, you know, have a big collection. So I usually uh, am the bourbon supplier and the uh, old-fashioned fixins supplier. Mm. And I like to have a theme. So uh, I might bring, you know... Uh, three Neelys or three Yellowstones or okay. something that has, you know, a theme to it. Or maybe I bring all rise. Yeah. What is your uh, go-to proof? Uh, at least a hundred. Um, yeah. I don't buy anything less than a hundred and I'm not a super fan of a hundred. I would say um, 107 to 130. Yeah. I mean, I like the high stuff. Yeah. And oddly enough, it, it wasn't very long into the journey that I liked the high stuff. And I think it was because I didn't very long into my journey buy, you know, um, shelfy stuff. It was pretty much all single barrels. So they were, you know, usually always 105 or more. What's yeah. the highest proof you've ever tasted for bourbon? Let me be specific. For bourbon. Uh... I have uh, a farm in a state that's 144. Yeah. Yeah, that's the real deal. That's good yeah, stuff. Absolutely. So here's a, a question that, that could play into this. Gokin, you're, you're close to retirement, and, and the retirement plans involve you liquidating most of your assets, uh, your home and everything else, and living full-time RV living. Uh, what's going to happen to the collection? Is is this a, a situation where I can uh, sweep in and and uh, uh, buy most of your it collection will be a for pennies on the dollar? Yeah. yeah. What, what what's happening with this, Mister? I can bring nine bottles on the trip. What uh, what are you going to be doing? Yeah. Well, we've decided we're not going to go the full time route. We're going to okay. go oh, most is, is time. Breaking news. So we're still going to have a home base. Okay. That's good. That's probably good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, somewhere. yeah. It allows you to be free agents. You can pick what, uh, in terms of the home, the, uh, that works best for you. Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, then you've got. And the uh, location. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Based it on Correct. taxes. Yeah. I need Careful to get out of taxes. Illinois. I'm in the land of corrupt governors, true. heavy taxation. Yeah. The only thing that Illinois has going for it is that they don't tax retirement. They make yeah, it there's up. Other, other places ways. that do that too. Hmm. There's plenty yeah. of other places. So. I mean, have you had Portillos? I think that's a that's a pretty big draw right there. <laughs> well, he's going to be in an RV, so he's going to be traveling state. around, so he'll be able to get that as needed. So yes. Uh, what is your? Uh, I know you mentioned old fashions, but is, is that your favorite bourbon cocktail, or do you have another uh, favorite bourbon cocktail? Uh, that is definitely my favorite bourbon cocktail. Okay. Um, I do enjoy a whiskey sour. Uh, I've never tried to make one. Right. Um, but we have a friend, uh, one of the couples that we go camping with, their daughter is a somewhat part-time bartender, and uh, she made uh, she made whiskey sours for us one day uh, with egg white. And, okay. Uh, it the was, right way. The yeah, right way. it was fantastic. Okay. But that's a lot of that's, – that's pretty complicated. The old-fashioned is pretty easy. How do you feel yeah. about a Sazerac? Never had one. I would like to try one, though. Very good. You've never had a Sazerac? No. It, I don't uh, order a lot of drinks out. Huh. We're, we're, we don't even allow, when we, when we had our kids, uh, we don't have them anymore. They, what happened we, to them? We gave them up. <laughs> it's fair. We didn't even allow them to order soda. We didn't drink when we were out to eat. 
Hey, can, just can, you water? It, can you enforce well, it with my wife? Yeah. I tried to tell my wife, if we're just get water. Oh, she has to have the yeah. iced tea. And these days, iced tea, it's like $5. I'm like, yeah. Oh, Steve, you're, you're getting Steve after water. the warden about ordering a fucking iced tea? Yes. Out of all the motherfuckers <laughs> here, <laughs> you're getting after someone about what they ordered because of <laughs> an alcoholic? <laughs> Do you she understand? Steve, 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 one second, water. Steve. Do you the beer understand is cheaper than, a, than an iced tea, though. how much your wife has saved you on alcohol costs because she doesn't really drink at all? Huh? Do you understand how much money Royce has to spend because I always like to have a cocktail? Well, I'm trying to just save more money, five dollars at a time. Uh, 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 Steve, I think that you maybe need to take a step back and shut your mouth a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Look at how much money you saved them on on Uber. On <laughs> um, exact that there's another good point on Uber. Amy's oh, yeah. fucking driving. She always has to be the driver. warden. Always drives. Right. I think that she is allowed to have. She's had to her drive God you damn iced tea, Steve. Wow, well, it's just the so right expensive. one, Steve. Next so time you're out, yeah. go to Uber and see how much it would cost for you to Uber home from exactly. Work and and no, say, my tip huh. wouldn't even be as much as the ice. Exactly. Yeah. Uber is expensive. Tip I'm dropping Uber down driver? the standings, but at least I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, and actually, for me, you moved up. So, <laughs> so with that kind of a they say, you're, you're moving up on mine, Steve. Oh, maybe down, you. me up. Yeah, it's oh, a bourbon bumps. You got to. I'm working but on but it. if if your if if your driver if your literal sober driver is like hey I think I want an iced tea no. you should probably go did you want a pitcher of iced tea actually every every <laughs> once in a while I don't know if I guilt her or what every once in a while we'll be at a restaurant she'll be like I'll just take a water and I'll be like oh that's hot yeah <laughs> hello five dollars goes home and swim hello and five bucks free, that's like forty five dollars don't don't tell me if I I would. Dollars. You would lose my fucking shit. You, you'd pick up that $5. It's like I $5 would $5 lose my shit. Royce went, I don't know, maybe you should just have a water. I just have a water, Becca. Maybe you it's should sign these refreshing. divorce papers. It's very refreshing. Yeah. If I tried that with my wife. Hey, honey, let's have some water, no wine. I'd be hit over the head with a damn bread that came. Yeah. And yeah. This is not uh, alcohol versus not alcohol, though. This is if if we're going a non-alcohol night, which we do a lot, and then we got a new thing where we go, we get we get a nightcap at uh, our favorite place, Perennial uh, Brewery. So that's kind of our new thing. We don't we don't drink during I dinner. Noticed. Yeah, and then we go to Perennial a, a, afterwards. Mm -hmm. So then we get a then we get a drink, and she gets a cocktail there. I don't make her drink water there, but at dinner oh. it'd be nice if she just drank the water. But then you know. That'd be five dollars towards the cocktails that are that nice. Yeah, yeah, that's really smart way of thinking, Steve. <laughs> well, in the places the you're going, Steve, it's money. probably not a is, great cocktail. Is the warden going to be with that Jack Daniels? I need to have just a little chat with her. <laughs> She'll be there. Can I please Perfect. have a piece of bread? I'm just going to give her meal? some ideas of ways to like re just ways to retort. You know. <laughs> Steve goes to a Mexican restaurant. He has Amy that, uh, eat all the chips and salsa, and he gets an entree. Well, sure, sure. <laughs> it's an Italian restaurant. She's not allowed to eat all she eats is the bread. Not right. even the water. Right. Why do we have to order? Drive the prices up for the next time. Heck yeah. When they go to Olive Garden, they're not allowed. She's not allowed to dig into the uh, all you can eat breadsticks, and she only gets one bowl of salad, one breadstick. Oh God. <laughs> oh, you I wanted thought... an entree, didn't you? Hear all you can eat breadsticks and salad <laughs> and soup. Yeah. Oh. That's I was enough. hoping, for, for Clayton's sake, I was hoping the, the topic of food came up at some point, because Clayton has the most ironic uh, uh, loves of food. Like, he thinks, like, Burger King is, like, the number one burger in the world you can get. That's that's the, that's food, the pinnacle absolutely. of burger excellence. Mm -hmm. Becca, what do you the think Whopper? about that? What do you think about uh, Burger yeah. King as the ultimate burger? I mean, it's it's not even something worth talking about, because <laughs> it's, so, it's so blatantly wrong that, like, it, it it's... Like there's sometimes where something's worth arguing over because like <laughs> there's a possibility that you could be swayed into like that that side of things. But there's other times where you go, this isn't even a, a discussion worth my time or my like it's it's a waste of breath. It's yeah. a great yeah. burger if you're gonna treat your pup who did a great you know who's just awesome all, all day and you stop by the drive-through and you want to feed him some meat on the way home. 
That is the perfect well, stop. That's growing. actually meat. I don't know. I'm if gonna... I have an eight in like, a month, so then yeah, that sounds perfect. If there's nothing else there ever, there's no food ever around. Yeah, absolutely. Now, which I, which I have said before, Burger King does have the best breakfast. Everyone knows that. They have fantastic Mediocre breakfast best. at Burger King. That's it. They need to just close by noon. Uh, Clay, you don't like their breakfast? They don't. They don't need to open until noon. <laughs> <then. laughs> Actually, ten thirty because I do go. I do do lunch by the way. Ten thirty is the best. <laughs> oh God! Oh. It doesn't come out of a can. Oh God! Uh, so Jim, <laughs> Goken. Yes. So we're, still, yeah. we're still talking to Jim. We're t we're still talking to Goken. <laughs> He's not trying to start any. Well, he, he. Oh, here's the thing, Jim. When you said we were a, a water household, I can yeah. support that because it's a water household. Right. I'm trying to get yeah. mine to be a water household. A water oh, household yeah, but is one thing. Cocktail is in a water household. I'm trying to get to the a water, water household. household where you go. Sorry, kids and wife yeah. and myself. We will be drinking water. It wasn't my idea to start with. Let's okay, just put that but out. I'm just saying that if it's yeah. a, a as a whole, yeah, if there's f there's four of us, right? Right. As, as a whole, two fifty a minimum. Sure. That's you know, hey, minimum as a whole, drink. sure. And, that, and that's that's when your kids are growing up. I'm telling you, these days everything's five bucks. That, that's yeah. twenty dollars. If you guys are all drinking whatever it is, sodas. And also, kids don't need $20. soda anyways. No. It's true. It's true. No, kids don't need soda anyhow. Yeah. We just they, they didn't coffee. need cell phones either. It's a good policy. But a grown adult woman, Steve, can get some goddamn iced tea. Grown ass adult woman. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't I feel like she doesn't need it. She's doing it to be spiteful. Good. Good for her. <laughs> good for her. I I will be encouraging her this weekend when I see her. When I see her tomorrow, I'm gonna give the warden a hug and I'm gonna say keep on keep on with the fight. God damn. Five dollars. You look at it for a lifetime. I've been with this woman since 1985. Uh, you start, you start doing the math on all those iced teas. That's a lot. That's a lot. I, if we did all the the math on how many old fashions Steve has ordered in his life, <laughs> and every single tiki drink Steve has ordered yeah, in his life, none of that counts. Hey, 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 Steve hey, would have the tiki a there. second right. retirement. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Nothing wrong with good a tiki drinks. Tax haven. Oh. So there you go. There's uh, there's everything you want to know about Gokin's uh, <laughs> bourbon journey right there. Off the rails. Sorry. <laughs> uh, off the rails. That's a good show, though. I feel like it's a good show. So so Jim can sit back and think, well, we didn't talk a lot about me, but it was a good show. What do you think is going to win for you? What do you think helps? I think that there you go. It's a good show. A good show. All right. We'll wrap this one up, as we always do, by talking about where people can find a sh shot. We'll start with you. Uh, You can find me at... Uh... At uh, what, what, was, what did I say earlier? Ought to be shot on Instagram. And uh, what's the other one called? Shit, I don't know. MySpace? MySpace. Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not Facebook. It's the other one. Instagram and uh, oh, Snapchat. So. My wife is yelling in the background, hey, Snapchat, you dumbass. Snapchat. <laughs> We've never had someone put Snapchat on this before. Right, but right. He's, oh, yeah, he's, he's on, he's on and Snapchat. And we can find him on his OnlyFans. He's on Snapchat, for God's <laughs> sakes. All right. All right. Uh, Clayton, how about you? Yep. You can find me on Facebook at the Jefferson County Bourbon Collective and on Instagram at Jeff Co. Bourbon Collective. All right. Gokin. I'm on Facebook at Jim Gokin. Becca Sue. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at Miss Becca Sue. 1K, no C's. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find at Steve Akeley, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, abvnetwork.com. Check that one out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see me, the ABV Barrel Shop, the place where you can try before you buy, and you never know what's going to be there. We are available online, abvbarrelshop.com. Miss Becca Sue, anything else to say before we get out of here? I'd just like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. If you like what we're doing, I see, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. Finance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. Adios. Until next time. Peace.
Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing. The ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.